What's up, everybody? It's B Show Brian again. Uh, I haven't done a Fear Cast Friday in quite a while, but uh, my man Drew Yari from the Drew Yari Show. He is uh, a podcaster. He's on Patreon, does some stuff on uh, YouTube as well. But my buddy Drew Yari, the adorable Drew Yari, who I've known for quite some time, uh, passed this nugget along, which I'm going to share with you from Bloody Disgusting. So let me share my screen here. There you go. Less of me, more of this. So from Bloody Disgusting, written by Brad Miska. He breaks a lot of news. Uh, They broke this earlier today, a week late for Friday the 13th, but hey, good nonetheless. Sean Cunningham developing Friday the 13th reboot and the one that everyone else missed that I saw was House. There's a House reboot. I did a House video on my channel a couple of years ago, kind of talking about how it's one of the unsung heroes of the 80s. But uh, we'll get to that in a minute. So, as a lot of people know, Friday the 13th was set to make its way back to the screen. Uh, A24. Oh, shit. You know, I forgot my... Here we go. In honor of... Here we go. (laughs) In, In honor of the news that a Friday the 13th reboot may be... There we go. This is my Halloween costume from this year. I should have wore the coveralls and everything, man. I get, see, I'm a, I'm a Midwesterner. I got plenty of flannel I could have worn. I've got a set of coveralls that I could have worn. And, uh, man, the angle's not good. You can't see the eye. There we go. So, just a word of warning. <laughs> if you ever make a sack head mask and use burlap, uh, this burlap or cactus cloth, whatever it is, when you cut it, the threads flake off in your eye. So kudos to Steve Dashford running around the woods with this. I think I'm going to keep this fucking thing high. <laughs> uh, okay. And for those of you who can't see me and maybe listening on podcast form, yeah, is that hard to hear? No, nah, maybe not. I might have to take this off. Uh, for those of you listening and not watching me like an idiot in a fucking burlap sack. <laughs> Uh, you can check me out on YouTube at B Show Brian. <sighs> anyway, let's get back to the matter at hand. So I can't I can't take myself seriously in this thing, which is fantastic. So it was announced a couple of months ago that partially because of the success of the Halloween franchise, that uh, uh, an agreement had been reached between Sean Cunningham, who was the creator, the director of the original Friday the Thirteenth. Man, my ADD is kicking in. My my blinking eye is driving me crazy. I can't, I can't keep it serious. Um, but Victor Miller, the screenwriter for the original, and Sean Cunningham, they were in some sort of court battle uh, for a while over who could, who really owned the rights to the franchise. It reverted to, to Victor Miller for numerous reasons, which many have gone into depth explaining. And they worked out some sort of agreement and A24, of all production houses, was working with them on a, a prequel or some sort of reboot series for Peacock. Is it Peacock or Paramount Plus? I don't know. But uh, I'm sure the article would tell me if I switched over. But they were working on... <laughs> there's a close-up. Um, they were working on a new series for Peacock, I believe it was, titled Crystal Lake. And... Uh, Let's see. Yes, for Peacock. So working on a Peacock series called Crystal Lake about somewhat a prequel to the, the Jason story with Pamela in the camp. And uh, they're going to explore some some different things. But now it's been announced through Bloody Disgusting. I keep doing that. That um, Sean Cunningham is working to get his own Friday the 13th reboot off the ground. So that's the first part of it. Then I'm going I'm to stop on the other one. Um, but this is this is interesting. I, man, I can't concentrate in this mask. Um, so not only is it confirmed that he was working on his own reboot, but it also says later on in the article that he's working on a sequel. And the interesting thing that I noted was it's not just a sequel to Friday the 13th, or the reboot. i got to take this off. It's fun, but I can't concentrate. Not only is he working on a a reboot, a remake, but he's also working on a sequel 
to the film. And on top of that, he's got a plan B in mind in case they can't get the rights figured out with Victor Miller. So what would happen would be there's a chance that if they can't get the rights figured out, see, I really wore it because my hair, I need a haircut. Um, if they can't get the rights figured out with Victor Miller and Sean Cunningham to come together for a sequel, there's some weird rights issues going on where uh, Sean Cunningham couldn't necessarily use Jason. and or it, It's a wonky thing. He couldn't use Crystal Lake. He couldn't use the lore, Pamela Voorhees. And he couldn't use anything from the original. And he may have to do it just internationally. He can't do it in the state. It's really, really weird. I'm drinking tea out of my Friday the 13th mug for such an occasion. And um, it's interesting to note that he's got a backup in mind. And he mentioned, if I can find it, um, that he's got a backup in case it doesn't go well. Yeah, see, someone else sent me a different article, too. Uh, let's see. This is more like... All right. Yeah. So I'm not going to I'm not going to keep going through. Oh, um, here we go. Locker continues. Obviously, the prequel TV series has reignited interest. All right. Let me let me back up here. Um, I looked at this earlier and then I got lost putting the mask on. So sorry about that, guys. Oh, uh, let's see. He's joining forces with Brian Fuller for Hannibal and A24 for the Peacock series titled Crystal Lake. Um, working alongside writer Jeff Locker. And let's see, Sean hired me to do a rewrite on The Night Driver, and after working closely with director Jeremy Weiss and him on that, we naturally got to talking about Friday the 13th and House. Jeremy and I pitched our dream reboot of Friday the 13th with Sean's blessing to keep developing it, uh, developing it with him. Locker obviously says, the prequel TV series has reignited interest about a new film, so we're hoping the surrounding excitement will inspire both, si inspire both sides, excuse me, to come together and give us Jason on the big screen again for the first time in 14 years. But we also have a plan B for a sequel to the original we think fans will absolutely love and should avoid any legal entanglements. So what you could wind up with is something that I pitched. There's another video on this channel about the future of the, the Friday the 13th franchise. Uh, but basically I was thinking about how could you move forward without Jason? And with them setting up Crystal Lake as this property, they could always go on and move on and do other things with other characters, ancillary. Um, and and it's, it's, it's funny that they say if there's a sequel to the reboot, I was under the impression, so correct me if I'm wrong down in the, the comments, guys. I was under the impression that they couldn't do Jason because it was tied in or derivative work of Friday the 13th, which is property of Victor Miller. So what would you do? Come up with your own new f new uh, mythos and, and all this stuff to come up with something related to Crystal Lake with nothing to do with Jason? Would this create a new continuity since it's a new project, even though it's based off of characters written by uh, uh, Victor Miller? And if people are fans of Friday the 13th, how are they going to keep people happy if Jason's not involved? You would almost have to have an equally as iconic character or at least a, a story that's really engaging to keep people going. Uh, but that was, that was the big part of the news for me was I knew that they were working on some sort of a reboot. I know they had the, the, the Peacock series in mind. But the, but the reboot and with the potential that they're already developing backup plans in case this doesn't work out with Victor Miller and Sean Cunningham is really incredible because let's, let's back up here. Sean Cunningham is the one uh, who is cited in some cases in Jason uh, Goes to Hell for, by, by Adam Marcus and others. of He wanted to get away from uh, what was done before. He wanted to get rid of the hockey mask and do all this stuff that really got away in that movie from what made Jason Jason. And I don't know if that's a good mix going forward. Whereas Victor Miller, interestingly enough, 
never had adult Jason in mind when he wrote his story. It was a gag at the end, uh, almost like a, a Carrie ripoff jump scare, as he, as he explains. So it's, it's interesting that the future of this franchise, rebooting and remaking and requilling and all sorts of stuff, um, is in the hands of two guys that can't, haven't been able to up until this point, get along legally. And neither one of them seemed very invested in an adult Jason concept. So I don't know if that's a good thing. And, and I say not invested. Obviously, Sean Cunningham produced, you know, Friday the 13th, 2 and 3 and 4 and 5 and 6 and 7 and worked with New Line to make uh, some of the later installments. But to my, my point is maybe that's a strength. Maybe both of, that, both of these guys will look and say, look, Jason's his own thing. People love it. We can do something, but let's come up with something else together that's that's related. You know, what is it about Crystal Lake? Is it the lake? Is it the area? Is it the Voorhees family? Is it some sort of curse? You know, what 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 is this evil? Almost like a Twin Peaks type of deal, where um, you know, not so David Lynch out there, but like, what is it about this place that there's it breeds evil, maybe, or this bad thing? Perhaps this bad thing happens, and almost like some mystical people say that when a bad thing happens, the energy haunts the place, not necessarily ghosts. So maybe this terrible, tragic thing happens, and this force of evil nature is just trapped there, and it poisons and it, like a cancer everything that comes in contact with it. I kind of like that idea, too. You know, it is my own idea, so I'm going to pat myself on the back. <laughs> I'm joking, guys. I'm joking. I don't love all of my ideas. I hate most of them. I'm embarrassed to do any of these podcasts or, or videos most nights, to be honest with you. To be 100% honest. Like, sometimes I'll sit and I'll write down ideas and be like, wow, that, that's kind of interesting, but who the fuck's going to want to listen to that? And now here I am, Friday night. But I'm glad that you're checking this out. Freestyle Friday. Um, uh, Fearcast Friday, I should say. So... That will remain to be seen what happens, but maybe two guys who never intended for an adult Jason to be trompsing around the woods, uh, maybe they are good stewards and, and custodians of this series if they are looking to move past that because Jason became the franchise after a while, but you got to, as Halloween has seen, you've got to move past it at some point, whether I liked Halloween ends or not. So um, let's get back to the article here because the, the one thing I haven't seen anybody talking about is the other thing I mentioned at the top. House. 1985's House. If you've never seen House. Let me see if I can cue something up here. If you want a rundown of the movie. Go to um, this, this page. And look at House. I did a whole rundown. So I'm going to pull up some stills here. Um, House was a movie, I'll give you the quick rundown, not the long video version. Basically, a guy's aunt dies, he inherits the house, some wonky stuff starts happening. Um, it's obviously haunted. And he encounters all these ghouls, these ghoulish creatures. Uh, it's the last American hero, if you're a, a, a 80s kid or a fan of, of that kind of pop culture. It's, it's kind of corny. It's right as horror started to turn uh, somewhat campy, but it still has a certain charm about it and uh, some cool scares. I watched it one night just randomly, and I was surprised at how much I enjoyed it. And as I mentioned in the video that you can check out on this channel, um, some of the creatures like this one here predate movies like uh, Brain Dead, right? or Dead Alive, whatever it's called, officially, by almost a decade. I mean, this came out in 1985. Brain Dead came out in the early 90s. So five, six, seven, eight years before before Brain Dead and Killer Clowns from Outer Space wasn't until the 90s or late 80s. So if you like those kind of creatures, monsters, some classic types of uh Horror monsters, there's some rod and puppet monsters, there's a really ominous looking house that this all takes place in. Um, it's, it's just a fun movie, a fun movie from 1985. It was really successful. 
uh, in its day, but it's it's it didn't have the iconic character to build a franchise. Although they did kind of build a franchise, I might do a history of that franchise one time because it's really confusing. Um, but it it didn't really have that one iconic character to really build it into a juggernaut of a franchise. It was a cool little story. There were some additional you know, pieces that came out of it. There's lots of, of comedy. In some ways, it reminds me of a cross between Poltergeist, um, Poltergeist, Killer Clowns from Outer Space. There's a couple other mixed in there. But it also is a really good movie that touches on like Vietnam and post-traumatic stress and things like that. So um, very cool movie. Check it out. It's always on one of the uh, streaming services that you'll be able to find. So very, very fun movie. Uh, interesting story to the rest of the franchise, though. Uh, we'll get into that on another day. So I'm really excited that this is coming out. This is another Sean Cunningham movie. The music in the original was done by Harry Manfredini. Uh, some of the original principal actors, or I guess you should say not principal, supporting actors, uh, had roles in various Friday the 13th movies over the years. George Went from Cheers, isn't it, as a, as a nosy neighbor? It's just a cool little movie. Um, it says it's going to be updated for modern times, which could mean really anything. But one thing I thought was really interesting in the article, it says... Um, they're going to reimagine the 1985 movie and there's also a video game concept coming. I did not see that. Okay. So there's some cool horror video games coming out pretty soon. I should do a separate one just on that. So we're going to get a house reboot with a, a video game concept coming with it. That'd be just awesome. Uh, so the house reboot. Uh, is an update and reimagining of the classic series, the article continues, centering around the birth of a haunted house. Uh, lots of great scares, howl at the screen, laughs, uh, plus we're bringing back a few of your favorite monsters from the original for some really fun but equally terrifying kills. Very nice. Um, yeah, there's another one there. It's really cool. It's like there, there's portals to other dimensions in the house and, and some really cool, like, it's just a it's a really well it's it's corny at times but a well made film. There's a lot of little hints and subtext in there that like piece things together. So, um I think that's it, man. I think that's pretty much it from the article, but so not only are we getting Friday the 13th, but House as well. If you're a fan of 1980s horror movies, that that should be enough to excite you. I know there's a lot of independent stuff coming out pretty cool, uh, pretty cool stuff pretty soon. But A24 leading the charge on this Friday the 13th thing with the Peacock series. And now we get reboots and houses coming. And I am very excited to say the least. But I'm B Show Brian. That's the latest that I've known uh, that I know of. Thanks to Drew Yari. Go check out the Drew Yari show uh, everywhere. Podcasts are found and on Patreon. And, uh, yeah, thanks to Bloody Disgusting for breaking this. So I'm B-Show Brian. I'm on to the next thing. I will see you guys later for this Beer Cast Friday. <laughs>